वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड लिंग्विस्टिक चैनल फॉर लिटरेचर लवर्स दिस इज द पार्ट फोर ऑफ अ सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस ऑल अबाउट पोएट्री इन द करंट वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स रिगार्डिंग पोएट्री दीज टर्म्स आर एलिटरेशन कॉन्सोनेंस इन ऑपरा refrain apostrophe resonance chiasmus enjambment onomatopoeia volta personification and anthropomorphism so let's discuss them one by one opia volta personification and anthropomorphism so let's discuss them one by one the first term here i am going to discuss is the alliteration what is alliteration it is the repetition of initial consonant sounds in a phrase or a word line for example in zero poets the highlighted p represent an example of alliteration The poetic example is these two lines from a poem written by Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. The alliteration in this poem or in these lines is D, which is highlighted here. It is a good example of alliteration in the poetry. number 2 is consonants it is also the repetition of a same consonant sound with a group of words in a line of poetry or stanza for example zack sneezes when he heard jazz music the sound z has been repeated the poetic example is Parada- these lines from the paradise lost by john melton the world t has been highlighted which is being repeated in every line the difference between alliteration and consonants is that in alliteration the consonant sound occurs at the beginning of a word whereas in consonants the consonant sound can occur anywhere in the word maybe at the beginning in the middle dear student the third term is an opera what is an opera it is the repetition of the same word or phrase at the beginning of a line throughout a work or the section of a work to create musical effect as an example consider these lines from a poem some feel rain by joanna clink the word same feel occurs at the beginning of the first line and then it is repeated in the same line and the third line it is a good example of an opera The fourth term is refrain. A refrain is a literary device in which a word or phrase is repeated at regular intervals in different stanzas. Sometimes it contains minor changes in wording or sequence. As an example, look at these lines from the poem One Hour by Elizabeth Bishop. The highlighted word losing lost loss lose loss and losing in the first line the third line fourth line fifth line and sixth line is a good example of refrain in of uh, and refrain seem similar terms but they are different in the sense that in of uh, must occur at the beginning of a line for the first time and then it can occur 
in the middle or at the end of the remaining lines but refrain does not follow the same condition it can occur anywhere in any line so that is the major difference between an opera and refrain it can occur in the middle or at the end of the remaining lines but line so that is the major difference between an opera and refrain refrain to students the fifth term is apostrophe what is apostrophe it is a figure of speech in which the poet addresses an absent person an abstract idea a god or goddess or a thing as an example i have put here two lines from a sonnet by john don named dip dip be not proud though some have called thee mighty and dreadful far thou art not so in these line don has address death as if it were a living body the second example is from shakespeare sonnet 148 in which he says o cunning love with tears thou keepest me blind lest eyes will seeing thy foul faults should find in this line shakespeare addresses love these are the good example of apostrophe let's go to the next term which is assonance what is assonance it is the repetition of vowel sounds across a line of prose or poetry look at the line taken from george bernard shaw's play pygmalion the rain in span stays mainly in the plan the vowel ai has been repeated throughout the line the next example from poetry is the lines from the poem written by net king cole the poem name is as the first line of these line those lazy hazy crazy days of summer it is the poem name those days of soda and fredzel and beer roll out those lazy hazy crazy days of summer dust of the sun and moon and sing a song of cheer the vowel a has been repeated in the first and the third line this is assonance summer it is the poem name those days of soda and fredzel and beer roll out those lazy hazy crazy days of summer dust of the the next term is chiasmus or also pronounced as chiasmus what is chiasmus it is the repetition of any group of words elements in reverse order look at this example never let a fool kiss you can be reversed as never let a kiss fool you the poetic example is here the first one from john keats ode on grecian on beauty is truth truth is beauty you know on earth and all you need to know the second example is from an essay on man by alexander pop they say not man perfect say rather man is as perfect as he ought these are the poetic example of chiasmus so let's proceed to the next term man is as perfect as he ought these are the poetic example of chiasmus so let's proceed to the next term see to the next the next term i am discussing here is volta what is volta it is a shift 
or torrent of thoughts sometimes marked by and yet are only yet which usually begins at the ninth line in an Italian sonnet and thirteenth line in an English sonnet. Consider this line from the Shakespeare sonnet 113. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. These two lines is a good example of Volta. Well I know that music had a far more and dear student the third term is enjambment what is enjambment a line of verse having no end punctuation but running over to the next line to complete the sense look at these lines from the sonnet 116 by shakespeare let me not to the marriage of two minds admit impediment. Love is not love that alters when it alteration finds or builds with the removal to remove. Oh no, it is an ever pex mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark. The first line have no full stop comma or any other punctuation mark, but it's run over to the second line where it completes its sense at the word impediment. And in the same way, the second line run over to complete its sense with the third and the fourth line. The fifth line run over to the sixth line for its completion of sense and the next line is complete in its sense by itself. So such work in poetry is called enjambment. Let's discuss the next term which is anamitopia. What is Anamatopia, a word that imitated the natural sounds of an object, a living organism such as animal, human beings, birds, etc., or even insects. Example Buzz, the sound that bees make, or Slurp, which is the sound made by a cat or a dog while drinking milk or any other liquid from flat. The poetic example is these two lines from the poem Come Down O Man by Alfred Lord Tennyson. The moan of those in immemorial elms and murmuring of innumerable bees. The moan of those. Moaning is the sound made by those or murmuring of innumerable bees, which is also called buzzing. So these are the example of anomatopia. The poem Come Down O Mad by Alfred Lord Tennyson. The moan of those in immemorial elms and murmuring of dear student now we are going to define personification what is personification it is the attribution of human characteristic to non-human things or abstractions look at these lines from the decoder by william world words were when all at once i saw a crowd <laughs> A host of golden, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Fluttering and dancing are human characteristic, which have been attributed to the flowers daffodil. So this is called personification. The next term here is anthropo morphism what is anthropomorphism 
it is also the attribution of human characteristic non human things gods or goddesses or obstruction consider these lines from the poem what the red snake said by oshe lenthe the moons a little prairie dog he shivers through the night he sits upon his hill and cries for fear that i will bite the sons of ronco he, he is a prayed like every other thing and trembles morning noon and night lest i should spring and sting in these lines the moon and the sun have been attributed with the human's characteristic now what is the difference between personification and anthropomorphism personification is the attribution of human characteristic to non human objects just only one time at certain moment but when these characteristic are permanently assigned to a non human object such as stone air sun god or any other abstraction any other abstraction then it is called anthropomorphism all the animated movies and which turtle rabbits or any other animal behaves like human are the good example of anthropomorphism so these were the terms i discussed here not though in full detail but only the purpose of this video was to bring the attention of the literature student so they may find them interesting and to look for them on the web or in the book to learn more and more thank you for watching stay blessed are the